I love that you brought up the paradox again too, Nathan. Um, paradoxes are one of my absolute favorite things. And being having a logical analytic mind, but I'm also intuitive, it I also have what I call a dialectical mind. And I think that's also tied into my dyslexia because whenever I'm presented with an issue like sovereignty, my mind immediately goes, well, what about free will? And, or if you say black, I immediately think white. And it's just the way my mind works, like point counterpoint. And often I will paralyze myself with this internal dialogue of point counterpoints until I can't seem to make a decision. And that's part of what I love about paradoxes is because, and there's even a stronger word, I'll type it into the chat. It's called an antinomy. And an antinomy, so a paradox I would define as two apparently contradictory truths, an antinomy, is two logically contradictory truths. And Kant had four of them. And one of them, surprise, surprise, is free will and sovereignty. <laughs> Another is everything is has always existed and everything was created. That's another one of his antinomies where we can make logical arguments for both sides, but they're contradictory logically contradictory. And so back to the paradox, when I, I work my mind and I go down these rabbit holes and I exhaust myself as far as I can go and end up with a paradox, it becomes like that contradiction becomes like the gateway. And I believe truth is through that door. Truth is beyond the paradox. But because of my current limited mental state or abilities, or perspective, as far as I can get to is the gate, which is the paradox. But I'm comfortable with that now, <laughs> especially after learning the some of the lessons from Job and letting God be God and letting me be a, a creature um, at the pleasure of my creator, that I'm okay sitting with paradoxes now where in my youth I was not. I wanted an either or, this or that, very black and white solution to the issue. And, and that's kind of, oh, go ahead. Well, Dr. Bradburn, when do you let go of your controversy or, or your problem? When do you let it, uh, just let it go? I'll leave it to you, God. When, when is that? When, when you get to a certain point, right? Uh, of your... Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I, I want to be careful how I word this. I don't like it when Christians are intellectually lazy and just do this, um, well, it's beyond us, or it's a mystery, or we can't know these things. And that may all very well be completely true, but at least as a philosopher, it's kind of my job. Like a farmer plows the fields, I plow arguments and furrows in the mind. and. I, that is my work, and I do it until I get to that point where there is, there's no more. It's just a perceptual conflict, and I do not have the intellectual ability or logic or reason or perspective to go past that gate. But it took me a long time to get to that point where now I love those gates because I feel like, oh, I'm at the threshold of truth, but at least now... This as far as I can pass. Now, sometimes I'll go back and visit and see if that's the real gate or if maybe there's a, a gate further in and I can go a little further down the path. But I'm very comfortable with sitting at the gate of paradox now, which I was not when I was younger. Uh, to me, I feel like I accomplished something when I get to a, a logical draw. I love it. And then I love being able to trust God in spite of me it not lining up with my own reason or understanding and that goes back to what nathan was saying that the, that is what faith is we're walking um, by faith not by sight or by our own reason and, and just a quick comment on faith uh, it's another unfortunate word that 
gets used in a lot of wildly different ways in our culture. Like we can talk about we have faith in God or we have faith in our um, our significant other or we have faith in our children or we have faith in our sports teams, whatever it happens to be. And I want to contrast uh, Nietzsche, uh, agnostic or atheistic uh, philosopher, also existentialist, he said, um, faith, how did he put it? Um, basically, he claims faith is nothing more than wishful thinking for people who, who don't want to believe or follow logic and reason. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, faith is nothing more than wishful thinking. I've been a Raiders fan since 1976. And even though we've been in the doldrums for the last decade or more, I'm still, I swear, it could be the fourth quarter. We're down 21 points. I'm just like, you can do it. We can come back. We've done it 100 times before, but it's not the same people. It's not the same team. And I would say that is not God-given faith. That's Fred's wishful thinking. And I want to distinguish between the faith that God gives, which I believe God-given faith, it's like a mustard seed planted into our heart that grows into a great tree that bears much fruit and all of this. But the key is it didn't come from us. It is a gift from God to us. And there's lots of passages that refer to that of like um, the Pharisees were after Jesus. And he's like, why are you all so rough? I'm doing a really loose translations right now. Forgive me. But he's like, why are you all so upset? He says, um, no man can come to me except the father draw them. Like it was such an interesting statement to make to the Pharisees. It's just like you don't even have the ability to come from me if my father has not given that to you. And that's what I would call the gift of faith that's salvific or brings us to a saving knowledge. And not only that, it's the paradox of faith. It's the biblical definition is faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Wild. I love it. And Kierkegaard's definition of faith is it's the surest form of knowledge. But that's the God-given kind, not our wishful thinking kind. Okay, I've talked enough. When Jesus says, like, no one can come to me unless the Father draws them, could that be interpreted like kind of like how Rumi said, like, like that dreams call you? Like, if you have a dream, it's not like, oh, I have this dream. It's a, no, there's this idea out there that's calling you towards it. Like, you know, like, and so that could be as simple as like, uh, you can't come to me unless, unless you, you think about it essentially, or you've had that thought. Right. But the thought itself comes from God. Exactly. Yeah. 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 How, how interesting to bring up Rumi. I love it. 